sound system is highly essential for putting on a party or musical event, and the London-based company Function One are pretty ahead in the game when it comes to that. Thus, it's hardly surprising that Function One sound systems can be found in some of the best clubs in the world. Berghain in Berlin, Space in Ibiza, or Cielo in New York, just to name a few. We met up with Function One visionary Tony Andrews at the Frankfurt Music Fair, where he was giving a presentation on Function One, a perfect candidate for this episode of Tech Talk. What exactly is Function One? Well, it's a company dedicated to loudspeakers in particular, but we are very concerned with everything in the audio chain, because what's the rest of the audio chain affects the way our speakers sound. But primarily, we're about loudspeakers, and we have. Um, shall we say methods and approaches that are quite different from pretty well everybody else in the world. What is the main difference? I would say in the high mid frequencies, um, it's smoother. It can be it can be loud and and, and strong and uh, lots of impact, but it, very low distortion. All the other devices use a metallic compression driver, so the the thing that is making the sound is actually made out of metal, and we make that frequency band with with uh, cone loudspeakers, in other words, paper, and paper is a much more organic, more friendly material. And the speed of sound in the material is closer to what it is in air. So the transition from the diaphragm to the air is a lot smoother. I mean, everybody knows what um, a dustbin sounds like, a, a metallic one or an oil drum. It's not a, it's not a great sound, whereas organic things... Uh, I mean, there are steel guitars, but most of the classical instruments tend to be made out of wood. It's, um, it's something we, we like, and paper is only one step removed from wood, really. Something for your mind. Typically, we, our speakers are flat. There's no processing. It's another reason they're natural, so they don't have to be corrected. We will spend a lot of time getting the speaker and the waveguide to work together to produce a naturally flat sound. I don't think, well, no other manufacturer um, makes now makes loudspeakers without equalization. But then again, um, I come from a long time ago when people didn't have DSP. In fact, EQ had only just been invented, analog EQ, when I, when I started. So that was how you had to do it. You had to make flat speakers because there was no alternative. And I've always had that attitude. And they, they're saying, in a way, that if you take a graphic equalizer, because that's, you know, you can, a DSP will give you that, and you can boost this frequency and cut that frequency. But why is the thing not even in the first place? If you, if you have um, a cancellation and you start to put more energy, so a cancellation will give you a hole. So if you start to put more energy into the hole, all you get is a bigger argument. It's, um, it, it's this ridiculous. Um, quite frankly, the rest of the manufacturers, um, I have no respect, very few, one or two maybe. But generally speaking, I think they're not helping the situation. Um, they're misinforming the public, it's all marketing. It's just like politics, it's spin. And the outcome of all this is that the sound in the world generally is going down. Concerts used to be better 25 years ago than they are today, I'm afraid. Something for your Another important thing is that it's very efficient. It's part of the reason it's, um, people like it, it's because it's very clean. But because it's efficient, in other words, by that I mean you get a lot of sound for the minimum of amplifier electricity. And this means that all the componentry is not under stress, so, you know, it's relaxed, it does it easily, it's effortless. 
people often use that word with our systems that it's effortless so so a thing to mention is that it has a very good conversion of um, electrical energy into acoustic energy um, probably the best in the business because we think this is we've always thought that was obviously a good thing to go for it's like a petrol engine you know they're typically only 25 to 30 percent efficient well you get another 10 percent and it's all over the place everybody's as pleased as pie um, sound systems are about the same the the speakers in in your laptop are about one percent efficient the speakers in the front room are maybe two or three percent we get as far maybe as 30 percent but a hundred pure watts of sound is actually enough to kill you thing that concerns me greatly is the decline in audio standards generally. Uh, the, the digital world has not bought better sound, that is complete and utter rubbish. It's actually made it worse. Um, we are now stuck with this dreadful MP3 which most of the DJs use. Um, it's not real sound, it's, a, it's if you like it's a toy, it's not professional. Um, I can't believe everybody uses it. Uh, a lot of the sound systems out there today are so bad that you can't even tell the difference, but you can on ours. So we always try to talk to the club owners and say, look, tell the DJs to use WAV files, minimum CD quality. To be honest, that, that's not necessarily good enough for the, the scope of human perception. In other words, anything less than you know, what we are capable of perceiving is, um, is an insult, actually. And MP3s are a very big in insult, I would say. So, in terms of digital, if you want to talk numbers, um, the minimum we need, I would say, would be 24-bit depth and 96 kilohertz. Now, um, a, WAV, um, a CD is 16-bit, 44.1. So, even, although it's just about acceptable, it's still not doesn't address what the human um, audio system, you know, the perception is capable of discerning. Obviously, all the links in the chain play a role in, um, in, in the audio quality. And in fact, the weakest link in the chain will be the level that the audio quality can, can get to, um, sadly. But it's always been that way. In, in hi-fi world, right back to the 50s and 60s, that was, that was understood, that um, it can only be as good as the worst thing in the system. And sad to say, a lot of the time, the worst thing in the system is what the DJ brings. Um, sorry to say this, but um, uh, not only are they using MP3s, which I've already mentioned, um, but the, just the general mixing standards. Um, you know, they overload things that don't um, run things at a nice optimum level. Um, to get audio from one place to another and keep its integrity is actually a skilled job and needs some sensitivity. And with all the digital machinery and the programs that are available, there are all kinds of people who are definitely not sensitive and who are not um, necessarily even musical now making music. Um, I used to think it was a good thing. These days I'm questioning. be lovely if life was 
completely simple. And if you have a, sound, a function one sound system, then everything's going to be perfect. But actually, it's not that simple because there, there are other factors. We've already been mentioning the source material and the, the chain of, um, should we say, the mixer, the amplifier, and the, um, the so the chain goes: the DJ, the mixer, the crossover, the amplifiers, the loudspeakers. So that's the order of the chain. And uh, there are very few good DJ mixers in the world. There are some favourites that everybody likes to use, but frankly, they're not very good. Um, I've yet to hear a good mass market DJ mixer, to be honest. They always compromise the sound. But beyond that, there is the, actually the, the venue itself, the room you're in, and its acoustic properties. And the acoustic properties of a room are a lot to do with the, the kind of surfaces. And, you know, it would be nice to have soft furnishings everywhere and carpet on the floor. Of course, that's impractical. But there is a big difference between, shall we say, an industrial vinyl floor and a, and a concrete or a tiled floor. We've actually done installations in the Far East in particular where the floor has got t um, bathroom tiles on it. Well, what does it sound like? It sounds like a bathroom, of course. Um, it's incredible how architects um, pay no attention to um, the acoustic properties of what, they're, of what they're doing. And, I mean, just if there are any architects happen to see this, I would like to point out that the, the human audio system can discern information down to 15 to 20 millionths of a second, which is 2,000 times more refined than the visual sense, which only needs 30 frames per second to believe there's a continuum. If you've got something slower than 15 millionths of a second, the ear can sort that out, and that's how it does it. Why do you think we got 360 degree perception in audio that never switches off? So if you find yourself being tired and irritable, uh, in an, consider the environment you're in. If you're one of these modern wine bars that, um, that actually sound like a large bathroom, quite a lot of them, then if you've been in there for a few hours, your brain is constantly trying to unscramble all the information. Well, this uses a lot of processing power and it tires you out. Uh, and listening to a bad sound system will tire you out. And so when something is flat, even and effortless, it, um, it, it's no effort on the part of the, of the person. And possibly this is why, another reason that people like function one. If a speaker is good, then you can put any kind of music through it. Um, there's, nothing, there's nothing different about the frequencies that are used, it's just the way they're used. You know, the spectrum is still the spectrum. It's like saying, um, well, we have a spectrum of colours, and you can use them to paint any kind of picture. But they're all the same colours in the end, but very different pictures. I mean, it's the same thing with audio, but people try to make it, make it crazy. I think what they're really saying is, the, the, the problems of a particular speaker aren't so noticeable with a certain kind of music. It would be fair to say that with the majority of dance music, you, can, you, you, you need to use extra bass because people uh, enjoy bass. One of the reasons for going for high quality and getting the sound as translucent as possible is that it has a very, when it's clean and clear and it's nicely produced and you've got a huge landscape of sound in front of you, it's a very uplifting uh, or even spiritual experience. And I think this is very, very important. And it's a part of the music and the, the sound that um, maybe there was more awareness of, um, you know, 30 years ago. You know, I like to, I like to remem remember what Shakespeare said, which was that music is the food of love worth remembering.